uh, Phil and Vainu here. Uh, welcome back to The Athlete's Spine. And today we're actually going to be talking about one of Vainu's favorite uh, sports, ice hockey. So there's been a big controversy over the course of the last year that's played out pretty publicly in the media. And for all of you guys that follow ice hockey, uh, Jack Eichel and, and Tyler Johnson both have been dealing with neck injuries over the course of the last year. And in fact, Jack, Jack Eichel got traded to the, to the Vegas Golden Knights because of this injury. Because of the injury. Like he got hurt and the team just didn't want him to play anymore? Yeah, so what happened was, you know, Jack Eichel and, and Tyler Johnson both had injuries to their necks. Specifically, they had injuries to their cervical spine, which is the part of your spine which is in your neck. And they had injuries to the disc, which are the shock absorbers between the bones of the spine. And, and what happened with them was that these disc injuries basically caused compression of their spinal cord and their nerves and was causing pain and preventing them from functioning the way that they needed to to play hockey. And interestingly, right, I mean, even though these injuries occurred in a high impact sort of setting, they're actually very common, right? People suffer from this type of injury all the time. You know, you can wake up with this pain. It's, it's common in car accidents um, or even uh, any, any sort of recreational sport. You can develop a herniated disc that pushes against the nerves going down your arms or even worse, your spinal cord. And the fact of the matter is that most of the time these get better on their own, you know, and they don't need anything aggressive and with treatments like physical therapy and with medications and just the tincture of time, these things get better. But for these guys, it wasn't getting better. And when it doesn't get better, there are operations that can be done to treat these problems. Now, primarily there are two different operations that can be done. One is a fusion, what's called an ACDF, where you take out the diseased disc and you put in a bone graft and a plate and screws to fuse that level of the spine. The other operation, take out the diseased disc and put in what's called a cervical disc replacement, which allows the spine to continue to move. And that's really where the controversy lies, right? I think that the Buffalo Sabres and their team physicians had recommended that the fusion be performed. But we're getting a lot of new evidence, especially over the last 10, 15 years, that shows, hey, maybe these cervical disc replacements uh, are, are safe and even more effective because it allows individuals to maintain the motion at those segments, right? And these are young athletes. The, the thought of fusing a 20-something a year old who needs to return to ice sort of feels a little bit morbid at times. And so I think what we're beginning to learn is that, you know, the gold standard for several years, even for decades was, hey, you've got a herniated disc that's causing problems. It doesn't get better without surgery. The surgery is a fusion, but now, you know, maybe the disc replacement is a better option for this type of individual. So in the right setting, fusions can work really well. I mean, Peyton Manning had a cervical spine fusion, went back to win a Super Bowl with the Broncos. The fact of the matter is that when a cervical fusion is not needed and a disc replacement is an equally viable alternative, that should be the surgery that's done. And the fact of the matter is that cervical, cervical disc replacements have been done in high level contact athletes before. So um, MMA fighters have had cervical disc replacements. Navy SEALs have had cervical disc replacements. Rugby players have had cervical disc replacements. And so these are all people that are subjected to forces on their, on their neck and cervical spine. And these people have all returned to high level, high level play and, and to their jobs and have done great. And so, we, and so we look back at these two athletes, right? We look at Jack and Tyler, you know, they had surgery performed and it went well. And they were actually able to return back to full contact play in about three months. So what's our bottom line here? You know, I think that as we take a step back, we know fusions have been a great option for many years. You know, what's so important about this situation, aside from the drama that it caused everywhere, is that these are the first two NHL players that have undergone cervical disc replacements. They were able to safely rehab through it, and they were actually able to return back to competitive play within a three month period. So I think that's what starts opening doors to what could be a possibility in other contact athletes in these same sports. So bottom line, you know, let's think it through about three months after the surgery, we can expect some of these players return to play. And so from a fantasy perspective, you know, if you know they're undergoing a cervical disc replacement, maybe stash them on your IR spot and bring them back for your playoff run. So don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram at The Athlete Spine. Until next time, it's Phil and Vanium.